A new study of songbirds by Professor David Clayton might hold the key to understanding human speech and memory. We think that the things that we're observing in the zebra finch brain in terms of gene expression are the same kinds of things that are going on in our brains all the time, probably your brain, my brain right now. We think that this changing landscape of gene expression in the brain is intrinsically, intimately related to processes of memory and information processing uh, in, in the brain. New research techniques allow scientists a non-invasive look into the zebra finch brain. In this way, they can see exactly how the brain functions as a bird communicates with others or learns new songs. We have this enormous explosion of this kind of technology that we can do now uh, in terms of measuring things like genes and, uh, and, and we, have, we can sequence genomes. We have this cool technique developing in here which involves uh, optical signals, a completely non-invasive system of shining light into the brain and then measuring what comes out and then from that we can infer things about the activity that's going on inside the brain. Similar to the way humans learn speech, zebra finches also learn their songs. As new songs are learned, hundreds of genes in the brain are turned on or off. Some of these genes are for non-coding RNAs, not proteins as previously thought. We can't directly see that in our, in our brains, but we do know that the genes that we are studying in zebra finches, um, those same genes are, are represented in, in our genomes and, and our we have evidence that they are expressed in our brains. The more scientists study the genomes of finches, the closer they get to understanding the genomes of humans. We still don't understand all the mechanisms there. We know that there are physical changes in the, in the brain. We would like to understand more about uh, how those physical changes come about. Of course, we'd like to understand how to stop them or even better still re reverse them. We don't have answers yet in terms of, of cure for Alzheimer's, Parkinson's disease. But again, this is a context in which we're, we're doing the research to try to understand the basic mechanism. So this combination of having this new model animal that we're just now really realizing is doing all these interesting things, and we have all these fantastic tools now to actually study that, how all these things can really come together to inform our understanding of the human condition and, and the kinds of things that affect uh, people. Uh, all these things make for a very exciting time in research.